In part one of this series, Why Single Sideband CB, we introduce two types of citizen band two way radios standard citizens band and single sideband citizens band. These two types, plus numerous other consumer and amateur class radios, are discussed in our book, Radio Free Earth Community Preparedness and Two Way Radios. And the one we chose as a starting point for those who are new to the topic of disaster communications is the single sideband CB. The driving criteria for this choice is range. With both CB and single sideband CB, you have near range communications. But only with single sideband CB do you have far range communications which we explained in the second part in this series, how single sideband CB works. In this third part of the series, making single sideband CB work for you, we're going to learn how to tap into the true power of single sideband. Previously, we introduced three popular single sideband CB two-way radios. While these three models offer different feature sets, they each comply with the same principles of high frequency radio communications. This is because nature defines our technical world. And in a similar vein, the same holds true with airplanes and birds. While they are very different, they both must comply with the same exact principles of flight. When we apply this rule of nature to single sideband citizens band radios, we also see a pattern, which in this case are the principles of high frequency two way radio. You may wonder are there any other two way radios that adhere to the same exact principles? Yes, there are. If you're an amateur ham with deep pockets, and a burning desire to win HF radio contests, this is the bad boy you'll want to use. And as to cost, like they say, if you've got to ask, don't bother. Nonetheless, this incredibly expensive radio faithfully adheres to the same exact principles of high frequency two way radio as our single sideband CB. Given that, why is there a public perception that these two types of radios have nothing in common? The answer to that actually begins in the present. Here we see the band plan chart for U.S. amateur radio bands. These require an FCC license and most amateur HF radios can be used to work the bands from 6 meters to 160 meters. However, there is one band that ham radios cannot work, and that is the 11 meter 27 megahertz band. When you see the significance of this, you will be delighted and empowered in a way you may have never imagined. There are three years in the last century which proved to be true citizens band milestones. The first milestone was 1958 with the FCC's creation of the Citizens Band Service by repurposing the amateur 11 meter band for a new role as the first generation Citizens Band. At that time, referred to as a poor man's business band radio, it had an odd channel configuration that was rather unpopular with manufacturers. 1972 is the second milestone because this is when the FCC updated the Citizens Band to a simpler 23 channel configuration. With this, manufacturers were now happy to go into the CB business, and popularity for this service flourished just in time for the 1973 oil embargo which helped to spur popularity for CB radios amongst truckers as the years rolled on. 
But of all the milestones, 1977 was the one that will matter most to those who survive a future global disaster. That was the year the FCC upgraded the Citizens Band once more by increasing the number of channels to 40 and by adding single sideband support. It was also the year that the movie Smokey and the Bandit, starring Burt Reynolds and Sally Field, made Citizens Band a part of our everyday lexicon. So, where does that bring us? It brings us right here to this very moment in time and to something wonderful you need to know. A single sideband CB is a relatively easy radio to operate, and once you are proficient with it, you will have mastered the principles of high frequency two way radio. What this means is that you could sit down in front of a highly complex amateur HF radio like this and be able to intuitively understand how to operate its most essential core features. As for the rest, you can learn them as they go because they are mostly fine-tuning and filtering adjustments. Ergo, master your single sideband CB and you will be halfway there to becoming a licensed ham. Now let's briefly talk about single sideband CB antennas for preparedness. Beginning with the strength of the signal your antenna will be broadcasting. We'll start with the AM mode. The most efficient way to transmit a message is with single sideband. The second most efficient is FM and AM is the least efficient of all three. So, let's see why AM is the tail end Charlie of performance. With AM mode, the signal is composed of a carrier wave and two identical but opposite sidebands. Given the four watts allowed by the FCC, it is like running water through a plain garden hose at one-third the pressure. Ergo, when the water comes out, it will not go far. This is why the range of a single sideband CB in AM mode is still under 5 miles. However, when you switch your radio into upper sideband mode, there are two things to consider. First, your transmit power is higher and so is your range. But you'll also need to make frequent adjustments with the clarifier. In upper sideband mode, your radio removes the carrier band and lower sideband, each of which consume 4 watts of power. This power is not eliminated. Rather, the 8 watts of power used for the carrier wave and lower sideband is combined with the 4 watts of transmit power used by the upper sideband to create a signal that consumes all 12 watts. The result is like attaching a fire hose nozzle to your garden hose and turning the water pressure all the way up. Now you're going to get some serious range. The same holds true with lower sideband. You get the same far range. Next, let's briefly talk about sky wave and ground wave because these are used to propagate signals in all three modes. Ground waves follow the nap of the earth, and this is the primary propagation for any CB or single sideband CB in AM mode. Sky waves literally skip off the ionosphere and come back down to Earth, hence the term skip. With AM mode, random skip is often heard, but it's not predictable. Conversely, with upper and lower sideband modes, you have equal performance for both ground waves and sky waves. This, plus the 12 watts of transmit power, 
is why single sideband CB radios have a potential range of over a thousand miles. However, not all antennas are designed for those far ranges. With this in mind, let's now take a quick look at four types of antennas you will want to consider when developing your own preparedness communications strategy. If you are scavenging in an urban area and you're on foot, a 5 8 wave magnetic mount is worth sticking in your pack. Find an abandoned car and affix the magnetic mount to the center of the roof and you are good to go. When you have teams operating beyond your community's outer perimeter on foot, such as security and scouting, a half wave N-fed antenna offers a simple and flexible design. We discuss this type of antenna at great length in our book Radio Free Earth because in terms of near and far communication for community teams operating on foot in an open country, an N-fed antenna is a powerful tool. In fact, we believe it to be the best all-around design for these particular types of survival missions as they can be easily hung vertically, horizontally, or on a slope, and they offer excellent near and far-range performance. However, one word of caution. N-fed antennas do require a bit of learning curve and you can only operate them from a stationary position. In our opinion, the best all-around, on-the-go mobile antenna for all types of survival missions is the one-quarter wave WIP, and they are also excellent for use with a base station as well. The actual antenna is 102 inches long and with a 6-inch steel spring will be 108 inches long overall. This antenna is ideal for on-the-go communications. For 1,000-mile-plus range contacts, or what amateurs call DX for long distance, an 11-meter half-wave dipole is your best option for optimal range. Similar to a half-wave N-fed antenna, they are not used on the go. Rather, you need to use them from a stationary position. But as with N-fed antennas, dipole antennas can be easily mounted in various configurations. Again, learning how to use both N-fed and dipole antennas will require a bit of learning curve. So tread slowly. Now, one final piece of advice. We strongly urge you to work with a local CB repair shop or store. A good CB technician or repairman can tune the components inside your radio to their very best levels. Also, have them make sure your antennas are balanced for your CB. Most will also sell CB radios and accessories, so check with them before you buy online to see if they'll give you a good deal on a total parts and service package. Now you know why a single sideband CB is your first and best low-cost two-way radio for survival communications. We hope you've enjoyed this series. And until the next time, remember this. Radio Free Earth will pay for itself many times over with your initial radio purchases. And the sooner you begin, the more you'll save. To purchase our book, Radio Free Earth Online, visit amazon.radiofreeearth.org. We offer three different editions a low cost black and white edition, and two collector-grade, all-color special editions. For the Radio Free Earth team, this is Marshall Masters. And if things go sideways, we'll catch you on the 40.